Oh, hello, welcome, welcome to day 29 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, follow our page, like our content, share, comment. We're excited to have you here. Let's get started. Day 29, January 29th, 2022. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Job 11, Job 12, Job 13, Job 14. New Testament, Matthew 21 to 19. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 17, 6 to 12. Old Testament, NIV version. Job 11, 1 to 20. Zophar. Then Zophar the Namathite replied, Are all these words to go unanswered? Is this talker to be vindicated? Will your idle talk reduce others to silence? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, My beliefs are flawless and I am pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secrets of wisdom. For true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God has even forgotten some of your sin. Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. If he comes along and confines you in prison and convenes a court, who can oppose him? Surely he recognizes deceivers, and when he sees evil, does he not take note? But the wit witless can no more become wise than a wild donkey's cult can be born human. Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then free of fault you will lift up your face, you will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as water has gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday, and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor. But the eyes of the wicked will fail and escape will elude them. Their hope will become a dying gasp. Job 12, 1 to 25. Job said, Then Job replied, Doubtless you are the only people who matter, and wisdom will die with you. But I have a mind as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know all these things? I have, a, I have become a laughing stock to my friends. Though I called on God and he answered me, a mere laughing stock, though righteous and blameless. Those who are at ease have contempt for misfortune as the fate of those whose feet are sleeping. The tents of marauders are undisturbed and those who provoke God are secure, those God has in his hand. But as the animals, but ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds in the sky and they will tell you or speak to the earth and he will teach you or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of these does not know the hand of the Lord? Sorry, I'll take it again. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the tongue taste food? Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? To God belong wisdom and power. Counsel and understanding are his. What he tears down cannot be rebuilt. Those he imprisons cannot be released. If he holds back the waters, there is drought. If he lets them loose, they devastate the land. To him belong strength and insight. Both deceived and deceiver are his. He leads rulers away stripped and makes fools of judges. 
He takes off the shackles put on by kings and ties a loincloth around their waist. He leads priests the way stripped and overthrows officials long established. He, is, he silences the lips of trusted advisors and takes away the discernment of elders. He pours contempt on nobles and disarms the mighty. He reveals the deep things of darkness and brings other darkness into the light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their reason. He makes them wander in a trackless waste. They grope in darkness with no light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Job 13, 1-28 my eyes have seen all this, my ears have heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear, with, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent. For you, that will be wisdom. Hear now my argument. Listen to the pleas of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you show him partiality? Will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if he examined you? Could you deceive him as you might deceive a mortal? He will surely call you to account. If you secretly showed partiality, would not his splendor terrify you? Would not the dread of him fall on you? Your maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will surely defend him, defend my ways to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no godless person would dare come before him. Listen carefully to what I say. Let my words ring in your ears. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. Only grant me these two things, God. And then I will not hide from you. Withdraw your hand far from me and stop frightening me with your terrors. Then summon me and I will answer. Or let me speak and you reply to me. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offense and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Will you torment a wind-blown leaf? Will you chase after dry chaff? For you write down bitter things against me and make me reap the sins of my youth. You fasten my feet in shackles. You keep close watch on all my paths by putting marks on the soles of my feet. So man wastes away like something rotten, like a garment eaten by moths. Job 14, 1-7 Mortals born of woman are of few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. Do you fix your eyes on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of, scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up, or a river bed becomes parched and dry. So he lies down and does not rise. Till the heavens are no more. People will not awake or be roused from their sleep. 
If only you would hide me in the grave and console me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me in a time, set me a time and then remember me. Someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my heart service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. But as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away, stones and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once for all. And they are gone, you change their countenance and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offsprings are brought low, they do not see it. They feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. New Testament NIV version Matthew 21 to 19 The parable of the workers in the vineyard Jesus says For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard About 9 in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing he told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon, and about three in the afternoon he and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. Then when they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired, who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Jesus predicts his death a third time. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm seventeen six to 12 I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You will save by your right hand those who take refuge in, your, in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Amen. If you're here and you would like to if you're here and you would like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, please go ahead and say this prayer after me, believing with all your heart as you repeat after me. 
Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, please go ahead and send us a message. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please share this post with your friends, families, and loved ones. Like, comment, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. We're always, ex we're always excited when you comment and tell us what the Lord has done for you. Today promises to be another great day. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye.